Apple's new iPhone 5 is actually the sixth iPhone that the company has released. So in five years, since 2007, they've got to this point from a starting point with this phone here. This is actually the first time that Apple has gone back to an aluminium back for the iPhone. Both of these two obviously share the same glass front and familiar home button. And for the first time, they go with the aluminium back. Um, aluminium isn't a terribly good material to get mobile phone signals through. So on the first iPhone, Apple had to have a band of plastic here to help the antenna. And on the new iPhone, there are two patches of glass, one at the top and one at the bottom. In 2008, after the original iPhone, Apple kept pretty much the same form factor, but changed to an entirely plastic back. Uh, this is the iPhone 3G, which is the first iPhone to have 3G connectivity. The original one, as anyone who tried to get their email on the move will know, only had edge connectivity. A year later, in 2009, uh, Apple really just changed the insides of the phone. The outside remained pretty much the same, but they brought out the 3GS. So again, the same form factor, the same plastic back, um, and a device that really didn't change with all that much, uh, at least on the outside, for the first two years. The biggest change in the form factor came in 2010 when the iPhone 4 came out. This one has got much more of a rectangular design. It's much less curvy. The back is flat and glass rather than plastic. Uh, and the front, obviously, is one piece of glass. Interestingly, when Samsung and Apple were in court in the US recently over patent infringement, Apple released some photographs of early prototypes of the iPhone. And one of them looked an awful lot like this, suggesting that this is possibly how Apple would have liked the original iPhone to look. Um, but there may have been production reasons why they weren't able to make it look that way. Um, the iPhone 4 was notable uh, to Apple's dismay for some problems with antenna. Um, and uh, that, that caused some difficulty with call quality, people dropping calls, because they were covering up the antenna on the band here with their fingers. So when the 4S came out this time last year, in uh, late 2011, it had extra bands. And that's really the only way you tell the difference between the iPhone 4 and the 4S. It now has two bands on each side. And these work as separate antennas, which means it's much harder for you to cover them up and to disrupt the signal. But the new model has changed things again. It still looks a lot like the iPhone 4S, but it is a little bit taller, so there's some extra screen space there. And it's considerably thinner, 20% uh, thinner, 18% lighter. And the first thing everybody says when they pick this up is well, this is significantly lighter. It feels significantly lighter in the hand than its predecessor. So there we go, five years between June 2007, October 2007, when it was actually released in the UK, to September 2012, and six iPhone models.